welcome to a game for your thoughts. Today we're talking about a history of Sekiro. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is a game that has been constantly talked over for the last few years. From its dramatic reveal in 2017 to winning Game of the Year at the 2019 Game Awards, Sekiro has a hard time leaving my mind, and I'm just fine with that. It's a game that is brutally difficult and is made by a company that is known for brutally difficult titles. From Software is best known for the Souls games and Bloodborne. Whether or not you have played either of those games, it's very likely you have heard of them due to their difficulty. But Sekiro was something very different for From Software and was a big departure from the Soulsborne style of games we had come to love or despise. So, how did Sekiro come to be, what makes it so different, and what kind of influence could it have on the future of gaming? Sekiro originally started as a spiritual successor to the Tenchu series of games, a former title of From Software, but after many years of working with the Souls style of gameplay, it was time to mix it up. People were looking toward a Bloodborne 2 or even a new Dark Souls title, just something new and awesome, but then we got Sekiro, something completely different. Instead of creating your character and going on an epic medieval or gothic journey full of intimidating bosses, you're a shinobi warrior going on an epic feudal Japan journey full of intimidating bosses. The drastic change of setting in the more character-centered story was a big departure from previous From Software titles. Hidetaka Miyazaki, director of the Dark Souls series, Bloodborne, and now Sekiro wanted to do something very new. In an interview with Game Informer, Miyazaki said several times that Sekiro was supposed to be something different. They didn't just want to keep making the same game over and over. This was an opportunity to try new mechanics, new settings, and a new style of game. Changing the fundamental aspects of gameplay allowed From Software to branch out and create interesting boss challenges, a whole new world to explore, and tell a story that was more personal to a central character. This idea of freedom was very prevalent in the gameplay. Your character Sekiro was armed with a katana and the shinobi prosthetic. Having one set weapon allowed the gameplay to follow set mechanics that bosses and enemies had to work around. With the shinobi prosthetic, this allowed players to have a wide variety of tools to use to their advantage. All of this allowed for a more strategic and open game, and this is exactly what From Software wanted, a game that had multiple ways to approach a situation. The sword play acted as a fundamental and using the environments the enemies presented, minor stealth abilities, and the shinobi prosthetic as multiple factors gave the player many, many different ways to go about progressing through the world. In an interview on Activision's blog, Yasuhiro Kitao, marketing manager of Sekiro, was asked, What do you think players will enjoy most about the combat? He responded by saying, We hope that players will enjoy a multitude of ways in which to approach combat. Players are free to engage on their own terms and adapt to each situation. Not only did they want players to have a freedom of how they approach each combat encounter, there was an emphasis on world building and exploration. Using the grappling hook, From Software was able to craft a world that was larger in both vertical and horizontal dimensions. This was very new and different for the team, as with Bloodborne and Dark Souls, it was a very linear experience and there wasn't a whole lot of moving around the map in quick and efficient ways. But here, having that verticality and being able to grapple from tree to tree or grab and move up ledges really opened up the world of Sekiro in a new way. Designers and artists of From Software were very excited to work with this game. It was something totally different for them. Building a whole world based on real life Japan gave the team new ranges of environments, colors, and architecture. They even looked to ancient blueprints and old drawings of buildings from that time to help them design this world of Sekiro. The finest of details were placed and artists hoped that through the experience the player would take a moment to stop and admire the world they had created. And I know for a fact I did. Several times. The freeform combat system, level design, and ancient Japan setting all set up Sekiro to have some of the most interesting, clever boss designs that From Software has created. If you have played any of their previous titles, you know that From Software bosses are very impressive on a design level and their difficulty. Yasuhito Kitao stated, When we design games, we don't wish to make them intentionally difficult just for the sake of it. The challenge comes from the desire to create that sense of triumph from overcoming tough situations. I know for me, that is what makes these games so special. That feeling of accomplishment after defeating a difficult boss. Using everything I talked about, From Software created some of the most rewarding and skill-based bosses. Miyazaki said that using this new freedom of combat and more exploratory mechanics, this creates an interesting relationship with the player in the boss arena. This makes it so the player has to look at the situation from a strategical standpoint and see what tools and tactics will work best for each fight. And there are two fights in particular that I want to analyze a little further. Miyazaki also said that each boss has a personality of sorts and their fights and arenas play into that personality. So first I want to talk about the Guardian Ape boss. One of the game's later fights sees you up against a large ape with a sword stuck in its neck. The fight presents you with one of the cleverest arenas in the game. The fight is very fast paced and requires you to be aware of each attack and knowing when the right time to clear some spaces. At first, I was frustrated with this boss and died in the silliest of ways and was becoming angry and unsure of the right way to approach the situation. But I took a moment to step back and watch the movements of the enemy and seeing when the best times would be to attack and how to avoid certain counter strikes. 
This is when this boss became one of my favorites in the games. The enemy is very fast and very aggressive. This plays into the arena which is very large and has a bunch of trees that you can use to move around the arena in more efficient ways. This environmental factor in my arsenal of weapons allowed me to find the strategies that would work best to defeat this boss. And when I got that final strike that ended the fight, I was ecstatic and had the greatest sense of joy in the whole game. After the fight, I actually went online and looked to see what others had done to defeat this boss, and I found that no two strategies were the same. Everyone had approached this boss in many different ways, and this was such a cool and very memorable experience. The second boss I want to address is the first fight with Genichiro atop Ashina Castle. This is actually one of my favorite boss fights of all time for many different reasons. This was a major turning point of the game seeing the player fight with Genichiro, the man who kidnapped Lord Kuro and cut off Sekiro's arm. To this point, you spend the game learning how the vitality and posture meters play into each other and how it builds toward the killing blow. This was the first fight where it puts you one-on-one -on -one with another skilled swordsman. The first fight with Genichiro tests the player to their limit whether or not they've mastered the counter system and how to use the vitality meter to affect the posture meter and vice versa. Miyazaki said the death blow is the climax of using offense and defense to defeat a difficult foe. This fight takes place in a very basic arena where there isn't much to aid you in the fight, beside the very gorgeous background that will sometimes catch you off guard with its beauty. But, you spend the fight clashing sword with Genichiro looking for the right time to strike and when the best time to block is. This is a very intense fight and it's a blast to learn how to master. It was very simple in design but with the use of the story to build tension of this fight and use your pure skill to fight Genichiro in a duel was one of the game's biggest highlights. This fight really shows how simple to learn and difficult to master the swordplay of Sekiro is, but has that sense of overcoming a difficult challenge and the sense of joy it brings when you get that final blow. So I've spent enough time talking about how this came to be and why it's so different from previous FromSoft were titles. How did people like this game? Well, they loved it! Sekiro was praised by critics and received very positive reviews. It was praised for everything the designers wanted, an open and strategic combat system in a gorgeous and more accessible world. But one thing had players split. The difficulty. Was Sekiro difficult? Absolutely! I gave up on it halfway through my first playthrough, but From Software stood by their game and refused to add difficulty settings. The reason being, if they let players change difficulties, then it makes it so everyone has a different experience. This allowed players to engage with each other and offer support. This also allows players to overcome challenges at the same level and so that it is fair. I absolutely agree with this, as this was how I got back into the game and was able to beat it myself. I talked with other players and exchanged strategies with conversation, and with that I came back to the game and finished it. One of the most accomplished feelings I ever have of giving up on something but learning and coming back stronger to win. The sales of Sekiro were great too, as in July 2020 the game has sold over 5 million copies and has won several awards including Game of the Year at the 2019 and the SXSW Gaming Awards. It was also voted Game of the Year by the GameSpot publishers in the Steam community. With all of this, what kind of impact could Sekiro have on the future of gaming? It is hard to say what kind of effect Sekiro will have on games being made from 20 years from now, but I think it is important for many different reasons. A game like this should be used as an example of great game design. From Software took a simple mechanic, the sword fighting, and built upon it and expanded it in efficient ways. This helps with the insanely clever boss designs. All of From Software games can be looked to for great boss fights. Each boss has some kind of gimmick or strategy. They have patterns and attacks that need to be recognized, and each time you die or lose to this boss, it's a learning experience. Just like my experience with the Great Ape fight, I was dying a lot and I took a step back and analyzed the situation. I learned from each death and overcame the difficult fight. The freedom of the combat Sekiro offers can be used to show that you can still have a central mechanic that doesn't change, but the way it is used in the enemy and level design can be used to go about each situation in new ways. You don't have to change your central mechanic constantly. You can introduce the player to new situations that allow the player to learn cool new ways to use that mechanic, and how other factors can play into the overall design of the game. The success of Sekiro and the new direction that From Software took in designing this could improve their future titles. A possible Bloodborne 2 could expand its world and add cool and interesting things that allow for more exploration. That is something that would be very awesome to see. It is hard to say what kind of future Sekiro has and if any future entries in the series can expand upon all of these things in cool ways. Only time will tell. Sekiro is still a new game, and the impact it can have on the future games still waits to be seen. Miyazaki said that From Software only makes games that are interesting to them. This passion of creating amazing worlds and challenges that test players to their limit is what makes From Software a very special developer, and whatever the future holds for Sekiro, I will be right there and eager to greet the next challenge. Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned something cool or new about Sekiro. So let me know down in the comments, what did you think about Sekiro? Is it one of your favorite From Software titles? Because I certainly say it would probably be my favorite. It is a great game and is absolutely worth playing. So let me know down in the comments what you think. And while you're down there, if you want to hit like, subscribe, and the bell to get notified every time I post a new video, that would be awesome. 
And if you want to see more of me, I'm over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash a thoughts. I'm streaming there all the time, and I would love to see you there. Thanks again for watching the video, and I'll catch you guys next time on A History Of...